The president of the Los Angeles City Council, Nuri Martinez, has stepped down as the president of the body following a leak of an audio recording from nearly a year ago where she makes some pretty gross racist remarks about family members of one of her colleagues and also says terrible things about specifically Oaxacans in Koreatown. Now we have examples for you to listen to, but first some context to understand you know, what the backdrop of the conversation was. Martinez and the other Latino leaders, there were at least two other city council members present during this conversation. During the tape conversation, were seemingly unaware they were being recorded as Martinez said a white council member handled his young black son, a two year old by the way, as though he were an accessory and described Councilman Mike Bonin's son as parece changuito or like a monkey. Now the leaked tape was originally posted on Reddit and claimed that the labor movement was in bed with City Hall. And the reason why they made that statement is because one of the other individuals present during that conversation was LA County Federation of Labor President Ron Herrera. Now the group discussed the city's once in once a decade process of redrawing council district boundaries, which was underway at the time, as well as the need to reelect Latino council members and ensure that heavily Latino districts did not lose economic assets, such as USC and the Van Nuys Airport. Now look, having a discussion about wanting to represent the Latino community in LA is totally fine. It's the way they went about it. So the people that you're gonna hear from is mostly Nuri Martinez, again, now the former president of the LA City Council. Kevin DeLeon, who's another city council member. Gil Cedillo, who's another city council member who has just been voted out. And then you have the LA County Federation of Labor President Ron Herrera. Now, what we're about to hear about is this dispute. They're discussing a dispute between council members, Curran Price and Marquise Harris Dawson, who were at odds last year over whose district would represent USC and Exposition Park once the new maps were finalized. Okay, so that's what they're talking about. Both men happen to be black and represent parts of South Los Angeles. Martinez told the group that she had a conversation with a businessman, Danny Bakewell, about the situation and argued that if Harris Dawson is seeking an economic asset for his district, he should seek to move Los Angeles International Airport out of Bonin district and into his. So that's the context. With that said, let's listen to what Nuri Martinez said. So getting back to Marquis, I told Danny, if you want to cut a deal and if you want to, if, if you want to make like the boss moves, I would go after the airport. He goes, I know that idea. I said, tell Marquis, so go take him from his friend. Don't go, don't go after, leave don't him alone. Yeah. Go get the airport from his little brother, mm-hmm. that little bitch bonnet. I go, I go, what is with the bond? What is with bond? And I said, Bond thinks he's black. That guy don't think he's black. He thinks he's black. I call the same thing. He goes, why are they so close? He's from Massachusetts. He's the one here. He's black. He's black. He's during Black History Month. He's lleva al council. He lo pone acá en el. Remember? He looks like it's an accessory. When we do the Elmont K parade. Just like when. They used to have those statues in the plantations. Yeah, like when Nori. In the front of the White Yard. Back. Or the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so they're referring to Bonin's two year old son who happens to be black as an accessory and it's about to get a lot worse. But before I get to the rest of the audio jank, any thoughts? Yeah, there's so many terrible things in here. So one's the obvious over the top racism that it's the big headlines. The second is apparently Veep is a documentary. So behind the scenes, I mean, they say all sorts of terrible things. Yep. I mean, Bonin is gay and so she called him a little bitch. Uh, so there's that too, which oh, that gets is getting very little press attention. Um, so, but maybe they just curse about everybody. I don't mind cursing. I mind any kind of insinuation uh, based on identity, right? Uh, but behind the scenes, man, they are no holds barred. And what's interesting is that, like, in front of the scenes, there's 
they like so professional and composed and their apology note is so sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And the media always tells you these are all these are wonderful people. Like they never report on this trash that they say behind the scenes, right? Well, they don't know about the trash. No, no, they, they don't know about this specific trash, right. definitely to be fair, right? But so none of the reporters know that they talk like this behind the scenes. I'm not talking about the racist stuff. I'm talking about all the other stuff, right? Massively insulting their own voters, the other council members, etc. So I, I never see that in the press. All I ever see in the press is the, the reporters kissing their asses. Okay, so now we'll get to this a little bit later. But I thought the stuff they said about corruption was actually the most damning. I mean, sure, of course, racism is always the worst, right? But it like they're openly talking about. Oh, what's going to get them more money? They don't like that the progressive members are like against corruption, and they're mainly talking about a real estate interest and how they're going to take money, but they don't want the other people to be a pain in their ass about it. And then, if you notice in that clip, they're talking about the economic assets mm -hmm. within a district. Yep. Now you might wonder, like, why? Why does it matter if she has the the airport in her district or not, right? Don't you want the human beings inside the district? And by the way, politically, you it makes sense to go, oh, hey, I want the district to be more Latino because then I'm more likely to win. I get that. That's practical politics, right? But why do you want the airport? Because of the money, they Lebowski. Want the money. They want because the money. Because then you could raise money from the business interest in your district. The entire thing is about corruption. Can, can I and that's not even noted in any of the stories. Guys, it's it's hard for anyone who doesn't live in Los Angeles to understand how awful the conditions on the ground happen to be right now. There is garbage literally everywhere, everywhere. People are struggling. There are countless overdose deaths on sidewalks all throughout the county. They don't care about the people of Los Angeles at all, at all. And I think that these recordings make that abundantly clear. So let's go to the next one. Later in the conversation, Nuri Martinez and Kevin DeLeon decide to say more disparaging things about Mike Bonin's son, who again is a two year old and happens to be black. For MLK, for the parade that Herb used to organize, and we need all the council who wanted to join Herb on the float, because he used to do a whole float to be nice. Bonnie would be like, hey, Nuri, are you going to the MLK? Yeah, well, Herb invited me out, I'll go. Okay, I'm bringing whatever the kid's name is, I'm like, it's like the oddest thing, it's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not doing it. Yeah, no, they're not doing The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically yeah. tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm over here trying to parent this kid. I'm like, you can't do that. I said no. Classy calling a two year old child, two year old black child, uh, a monkey. That is what she said in that clip. Yeah, by the way, she also said insulted white people next. She said that uh, that Bonin was raising him like a white kid. Right. And she said, I would take him out in the back. You right. got that? We actually do have that. So let's go to the last clip and then I'll read some other quotes from her uh, later in the video. Let's watch. Literally hanging on the rails. Well, you can't let him, let him off because the, the, the spectators will beat his ass. Yeah. They're raising him like a little white kid, which I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let me let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. She also said in the context of that clip that she wanted to basically take him aside, give him a beating, and bring him back. She said that about a two year old kid. About a two year old kid. But, but look, guys. And everyone in that room was like laughing, engaging in that conversation. Not a single person put a stop to it, called it out. Total, total business as usual. Business as usual. I mean, it's it's almost like she was trying to do like insult bingo, right? Uh, because she's insulting white people there by saying they, they can't control their kids. But she's also insulting Latinos by saying, hey, the right way to do it is to beat your kids, and that's the Latino way. Now, don't get me wrong, I know the, the old school uh, that, that there was more spankings and beatings, etc. I'm Turkish, that happened in the old country too. So, so I'm not unaware of that. But like, <laughs> she's the president of the city council. She's like, oh, Latinos beat their kids, and that's awesome. And white people don't beat their kids, and that sucks. 
let alone the racist comments about the black kid to begin with. I mean, it's just a nightmare. So uh, there was more in this conversation. So the group then questioned whether Chateau Place, a small street in Lafayette Park, uh, are in Koreatown. Okay, so I see a lot. Uh, this is so disgusting. I see a lot of little short dark people, Martinez said, of that section of Koreatown employing stereotypes long used against Oaxacans in Mexico and in the United States. I was like, I don't know where these people are from, she said. I don't know what village they came from, how they got here, Martinez said, before adding tan feos, which means they're ugly. Okay, Jeez. these are voters. These, this is. They're talking about the community that they're supposed to be representing. Yeah. Oh, they're ugly. I don't know what village they came from or where they came from. No, I think you're pretty ugly. I mean, what you're saying, who you are, that makes you ugly. Okay, it's unbelievable. Martinez also said, F that guy, he's with the blacks while speaking about Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. He's with the blacks. I mean, that's how they think. They're on the Los Angeles City Council. She's the president, or was. Okay, so look, guys, one more thing. There's racism within ethnic groups too. So um, in, in Cuba, uh, a lot of times the uh, uh, lighter-looking folks were racist against the Black Cubans, yep. right? In Latino communities, unfortunately, uh, some of the again lighter-skinned folks and the ones that could trace their heritage back to European ancestors, uh, oftentimes discriminated against natives. In Latin America, South America, etc., and you see an excellent example of that here. So even against other Latinos, she's like, "Oh, they're short and dark and ugly. Oh, they're not as tall and light as she is, apparently." And so it's just disgusting in every way possible. So it sounds like good news, Anna, that she has stepped down from being president of the city council. Not really, because she played a little trick. Stepping down as president of the city council doesn't mean that she's no longer in the city council. She has not resigned from the city council. And so I do want to read her, you're right, they all put out sophisticated apologies. Gil Cedillo made a point about like, I didn't intervene to stop this conversation and that is a heavy cross to bear. Like. Oh please, spare, spare me, yeah. spare me your uh, nonsense well, about how well, bad well, you well, feel, yeah, right? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. It was a mask off moment listening to that audio. But here's what Nuri Martinez said, quote, I ask for forgiveness from my colleagues and from the residents of this city that I love so much. I love them so much that I say tan feos yeah. if they happen to be part of, you know, come from part of the part of Mexico that I, I don't like. In the end, it is not my apologies that matter most. It will be the actions I take from this day forward. Oh. I hope that you will give me the opportunity to make amends. Hell no. Therefore, effective immediately, I am resigning as president of the Los Angeles City Council. So it's it's a great trick. So first of all, media eats that stuff up. They're like, oh, what a great sophisticated apology. Now we can call things even again, okay? And second of all, yeah, it makes it sound like she's resigning. She's not resigning. She's just giving up the top post. Right, and so no, I, do you want her representing people in LA where she thinks, oh, they're with the blacks? And so for everybody else in that room, guys, look, you know, one or two jokes, off color jokes. Maybe you guys are friends, and maybe you're even friends with other city council people. But and and you guys razz each other back and forth. But that it didn't sound like it, right? And but when she says they're with the blacks, if I was in a meeting with progressives and somebody said that, I'd be like. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. What do you mean? Aren't we all with the blacks and the whites and the everybody? And We're everybody supposed to be here, representing right? the insanely diverse community of Los Angeles County. Right. Very diverse. So if you have issues with pretty much everyone other than, I mean, Nuri Martinez, who do you like? She's going after white people, black people, Mexicans. Who do you like, Nuri Martinez? I'll tell other you. Other than that likes. cold hard cash, she likes exactly. that. Yeah, she loves the real estate donors. She loves those economic assets in her district. That is an incredible view into how politicians actually think. Do not let the mainstream media lie to you and tell you that they're respectable, honorable, honest people. Behind the scenes, this is what they are, the money, the money. And then the way that she views people and no one objects throughout the entire thing in strictly racial terms is amazing. Like that's, that's actually who she is.
and she can't be in that office legislating that way. That's not a slip up, it's not an accident. It's an hour long tape of racial assumption after racial assumption. And meanwhile, just like, where's the money? And 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 by the way, right wingers like are criticized, white right wingers I criticize all the time. Guys, racism is not just about white people. <laughs> a non white people can also be racist. If nobody's trying to, if you're not racist, we're not getting at you for being white. That's crazy. That was that's also racist, right? So you see here a Latina who's being over the top racist. So yes, it exists in every group. Yeah, with absolutely no self awareness about how. Under her leadership, LA has completely devolved. I mean, it's amazing. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.